You've been speaking about the pre-trained models versus post-trained. What are the pros and cons of it? And uh, how do we extract more value from the post-trained scenario, where I think India has better chances of producing many use cases like healthcare, which you've done? So pre-training is is a big boys and big girls game right now. Uh, yesterday, you may have seen NVIDIA just announced that they're investing hundred billion into OpenAI. This is probably the largest yeah. ever private investment in a in a private company uh, in the history of business. Yeah. So it has become a, a matter of scale. So when you do large priest training, you're essentially saying, I will bring in enormous amounts of data and an enormous amount of compute and build in one shot something that has the world knowledge, it's extremely capable. There is still value for that. It's still happening. These are called scaling laws. The scaling laws still work. But then if you once you've built the model, there's now action on how can I use the model in an intelligent way? Yeah. Not just ask a question and get an answer, which is called inferencing. But can I do inference time compute where I'm reflecting, I'm thinking, I'm doing step by step and reflecting on my answers, fixing my answers and then eventually getting me a good answer. Yeah. These kinds of post training workloads are much easier to train. They're less expensive. Uh, and you can get incredible amount of accuracy improvement using that. So the world will be a balance between pre-trained models and then post-trained and agentified uh, workloads. And that's really where I feel like companies that may not have the scale and the capital of OpenAI can still produce amazing products and services doing post-training and uh, you know customizing, fine-tuning models and building smaller models from the larger models and then using it to build stuff. <laughs>